This episode is brought to you by our friends at Brooks Blooms, your all-in-one landscaping solution. Brooks Blooms three-step landscaping experience offers a seamless journey from design to construction and ongoing care, ensuring your outdoor space thrives year-round. Visit brooksblooms.com today to embark on your landscaping journey where every step is a step towards a vibrant and beautiful outdoor entertaining space. G'day guys, welcome back to another episode of the Ads and Dunks podcast. As always, my name is Adam Trelaw and my best mate uh, in Brisbane, Joshy Dunkley. How you going, mate? I'm good, thanks, mate. Going well, although we are... Well, we're winless so far, but um, all going well otherwise and uh, trying to just, you know, get a smile on the face and positive vibes around the club and, and life because we all know what it's like when you're losing and uh, at the moment it's a, yeah, it's a hard one for us, but we're going to get there and um, hopefully that's this week, but uh, look forward to this podcast as I do every week, mate. How are you going? Going good. Yeah, we um, we always are uh, very jovial throughout the podcast and we like to um, joke around a bit. So I'm with you, mate. I love uh, love talking a bit of shit with you. Um, I guess I guess we may as well start with just get it out of the way. It's been probably, um, you know, a pretty rough week for the footy club and um, there's a lot of media uh, attention on at the moment. Um, how's it been down there? How are you boys going? Obviously, the winning isn't um, helping you. But, um, yeah, no doubt you guys are banding together and really coming together and, and supporting each other. Yeah, that's the thing. I feel I feel these days, you know, you, the media can say whatever they want to say about, you know, your group and the players and whatnot. But at the end of the day, we're as close as we've ever been. So there's no questions there. And I feel like these types of situations bring you closer where you're not winning games of football, but you're, you're still heavily invested in what we're doing. Not one player has stepped aside and been like, nah, this is not working for us or, you know, anything like that. So it's only going to be time before, um, hopefully not long, but before we get that first win on the board and um, then we just get our season going from there. But as I said, I feel like the vibe's really good. It's still positive around the footy club, just a learning environment at the moment. We have a, like a, a bit of a motto of ours is like, you don't lose, you learn. So each week we're learning and um, – these days, it's about you know learning from those experiences that we're learning right now. To hopefully that will hopefully that will hold us in good stead. You know, come the latter part of the year, we got to get a first win on the board first. So, yeah, well said, mate. Well said. I um I've got no doubt that the camaraderie there would be through the roof right now, knowing that you can lean on each other. So we got that question out of the way because we know that would have been the question uh, on everyone's lips about um how you boys are going. Outside of that, mate, how was, you, um, how was your Easter weekend? What did you get up to? Obviously, you played on the – what day did you play? Thursday? Thursday, yeah. Thursday night. How was the, uh, yeah, how was the rest of the weekend for you? Yeah, it was pretty good. We, uh, we, the VFL played on Friday, so went out to watch Kaiser and the boys play out at Springfield at our training base, and um, they got a good win against the Pies. It was a couple of points in the end, um, mm. and Kaiser kicked three, so he was up and about, which is great. And um, then I'd, I'd drop my uncle back at the airport and Tipper and I went out for dinner on Friday night, just a nice little date night for us. We've been doing this thing every week. So I, I brought it up a few weeks ago and it's more like a, you know, something fun to do. But so one of you, so you take it in turns, you have to pick a restaurant and you don't tell the other person where you're going, but you go and, and like you shout. Mm. So you, you could go anywhere, mate. You could go to Macca's, you could go to the most expensive restaurant in Brisbane, you can go wherever you want. Where'd you go? You tell me where'd you go? Uh, we went to Soko. So I got this recommendation from Noah Answorth. He said that he went there with um, his partner, Macy, and uh, he said it's a new place that's really good. It's like a rooftop. Mm-hmm. So I took Tipper there and, um, yeah, had a nice dinner and a couple of drinks and that was it. Wait, that is um, that is cool. I'm jealous. I need to do that. I mean, when Kimmy's down here, I need to do that. So. Uh, I'd love to see the surprise on her face taking her to a random restaurant. She would not expect that at all. So hopefully she doesn't listen to this episode and knows that the idea is from you because all my good ideas usually come from you. So um, <laughs> that's good. That's good. How was your um, Easter Sunday? Did you you would have smashed some chocolate, surely. Yeah, I had a couple of – I actually had these uh, Ferrero Share dark chocolate things. They're like dark chocolate eggs because I'm a dark chocolate fan. And they were mm. unbelievable, mate. Like dark chocolate okay. normally is a bit, you know – bit sour you know some people don't like it but this thing mate was unbelievable so i had a few of those and a couple of made we made cookies we went i should have said we went to tipper's family farm out in warwick which is about two hours drive Mm -hmm. out of brisbane inland 
Yep. And uh, we we're out there for Easter, so all their family and stuff were out there too. So it was pretty good. I that's when we went and watched the rodeo that time in the off season, wasn't it? Yep. That's it. Same place. That, that, that was a fun day because we also watched. Um, was it Trelaw? What's the horse called? Trelaw? Yeah, Trelaw. Oh, your horse. horse. <laughs> oh, he's not my horse, but could be named after me. I got no idea, but he, he ended up winning oh. Yarra Valley. That's how I remember that. I remember he won at Yarra Valley. That was a great day. Um, yeah, that was fun. But um, no, it's good. Yeah, we were sitting there. Yeah. We we're, were, were sitting there watching it all, weren't we? All of us. <laughs> yeah, all of us. I, I hadn't met anyone. It was me and Cooper, yeah. and then it was obviously you and Tipper and Kim was there and. Um, I hadn't met anyone. We were all barracking on these horses and telling everyone to get on this Trelaw horse <laughs> that was paying 20 bucks or whatever it was, but it was a good day. Um, I want to touch on the dark chocolate, mate. I want to, for our listeners yep. that uh, obviously listen and watch, um, I want you to send in whether you like dark chocolate or, or dislike dark chocolate because I think it sucks. Like genuinely, genuinely sucks. There's no dark chocolate that is any good. Yeah, see, it's interesting because I – I never used to like it, but now, mate, that lint dark chocolate that you can buy from the, the shops that have, um, it's like raspberry and coconut or whatever it is infused in it. I love it. Mm. That's my that's my go to treat. Yuck! Oh, well, mate, you can stick with that raspberry dark chocolate. That is, you know, I do remember in the um, in our hub when we made the granny against Melbourne that year. You had, I think, you had that um, cocoa black chocolate sent here, and you had. I ate the, oh, I ate the good ones. That, yeah, that's right. That's right. I ate the good ones that weren't the dark chocolate. I left the dark chocolate for you because I was like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> what is I, your favorite chocolate? Oh, you laugh at this because you'll be like, yeah, but my favorite chocolate is crunchy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, crunchy is like honeycomb chocolate. Honeycomb flavored chocolate, ice cream is my favorite. So, yeah, chocolate, um, crunchy chocolate's elite. Violet crumble in the fridge. Chocolate is elite, um, but any chocolate other than dark chocolate can't stand dark chocolate. <laughs> so let's move on from the chocolate. Um, well, we my Easter was my Easter was good, mate. We had Georgie and uh, we had Georgie and Kimmy down, and Georgie was able to go on um, two Easter eggs, two Easter egg hunts, which she has no idea clearly. But the, the eggs that she hunted for on the Saturday, um, so our footy club did Easter egg hunt on, which was elite. All the um, well, the VFL boy play VFL boys players that were there, they obviously were playing, so their kids couldn't be there. But all of the staff members' kids, um, the boys that were playing in the ones, their kids, Georgie, we were all at an Easter egg hunt on the Saturday, and it was so much fun. Um, so Georgie and Lola, so Lola Johannesson, she um, they become in- instant best friends. So uh, it was funny because I said to um, a lot of my teammates that you wait wait till you see Georgie here. She's the most extroverted human being you'll ever meet. She'll try and go up to someone and just be best friends straight away. And she went up to Lola and mate attached at the hip those two, which is uh, which is quite funny. Um, but they counted their Easter eggs and they actually competed against each other. So Lola had about I think thirty two eggs and Georgie had about twenty eight. And Georgie was a little bit flat because you know really competitive. Sp- Yep, the competitive spirit in her, mate. I'm, pr- I'm a proud father. Seeing the comp- competitive spirit already coming out, <laughs> she was a little bit flat. So, um, so we had to give her a little couple more extra chocolates, and we did a couple of trades and swapsies with, um, with Lola. But yeah, it was, it was quite funny. The next day on Sunday, on on Easter Sunday, we actually we we did another Easter egg hunt at home, and we used the same eggs. So she had no idea that we used the eggs that we had yesterday, but. Um, it was a great uh, weekend for us. Uh, Georgie, well and truly, is into the spirit of knowing pretty much everything nowadays. You know, last year she didn't really know the Easter Bunny, and she just thought eating chocolate for the sake of eating chocolate. Nowadays, it's you know she knows Santa, she knows Easter Bunny, and yeah, it was quite fun. And uh, it topped it up with a great win on the Sunday as well. Yeah, I was going to say it obviously um, helped you on the weekend having the girls there because you dominated on Sunday. Yeah, the boys played well, mate. We um, we, we were pretty <laughs> yeah, pumped. Listen to him. <laughs> listen to him. <laughs> Ten coaches votes us all, mate. Don't undersell it. You can you can talk about it. Let's. I want to talk about you because uh, you don't normally talk about uh, yourself. You always talk about everyone else. Yeah, yeah. We don't and, have to talk about mate, me though, mate. I was sitting there and I was trying to because you know what Warwick's like out there with the reception and stuff. I was trying to tune into mm-hmm. your game. And I was just refreshing, refreshing and trying to watch it. And then I got on and then it stopped working. And anyway, I was just watching you just dominate. 
So can you tell us how you felt? Like, did you feel the same as what you had previous weeks or did you just have this thing in you on Sunday that just, you know, everything worked? Because that's what uh, it seemed like. Oh, yeah. Thanks, mate. I appreciate it. Um, and I actually didn't know I had 10 coaches votes, so I appreciate that too. Um, you, are you bullshitting or is that serious? Are you joking? That's dead serious, mate. Dead serious. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Um, oh, how did I feel? No, I felt like I do every week. I mean, I prepare myself to um, – to play well every week, and I guess I was just fortunate to be on the end of, um, you know, a lot of plays that just went my way. I mean, it helped that, um, you know, for for the fans out there and the people out there that actually watched our game from start to finish, we clearly had a focus on spreading the load a lot more through the middle. So you would have seen, you know, from week one, there was a lot of myself, Bont, and Libba through the guts. Um, to week two, we spread it. We sp- spread it. It's not even a word. We spread it. A, a little bit more and then this week we did it even more with Jacko McRae coming in and um, and I, f- I felt like that just gave a lot of us, uh, I guess, more energy and um, more impact around the ball. So mm. biggest thing for me is if I find myself, you know, chugging away on ball too much um, and not really rotating and letting the other guys come in, I, found, I find my impact isn't where I want it to be because purely I'm just – exhausted most of the time and the fact that we had so many numbers go through there and, I'm, and I mentioned Harvey Gallagher and I want to touch on him a bit later because he did win the NAB Rising Star nomination which is incredible and I know I pumped him up a couple of weeks ago so we'll talk about that a little bit later but we have Gags and, and Riley Sanders, Nader went through there, Bonte spent quite a bit of time forward which clearly was enormous for us, he kicked three goals and was um, you know one of the best players on the ground again so yeah I just felt like um, I just had a lot more energy around the ball, which was nice. And, um, you know, I feel like the things that I'm doing throughout the week, uh, you know, to get my body up and, and running um, is, is really helping me on the weekends. And, you know, there's a few things I've, I've uh, planned out to do um, on a weekly basis, stuff like Pilates on my day off, which I didn't do much last year, every, every day off this year. Um, I'm trying to do Pilates, um, you know, on that day off. I, I've been... Diving into the hyperbaric chamber, as I told you about, which is something I've been doing once a week as well off-site at a joint called Regent Wellness in Hampton. So for those out there who live in the area, Regent Wellness, it's a great um, great location on Hampton Street. Make sure you get down there, try out all their recovery facilities. It's unbelievable. Um, but doing that once a week, I just feel like anything that I can do to help myself feel better, I'll do. And I feel like it's um, it's helped me to start the season. So yeah, I was just fortunate enough to be on the end of a um, few good plays, mate, on the weekend. And, um, you know, as you as you know me, I was just glad that we bloody won the game. I mean, um, we know how we went last year when when we take any team lightly and we definitely took um, that game last year for granted and the Eagles were way too good for us. So the fact that we were able to win in the manner that we won and, and keep them to 30 points and, um, you know, still have a really good score on the board, it was the most pleasing thing. And, um you know, just very, very happy that we've been able to play two really good games and, um, you know, hopefully people can see and, and fans can see how we want to play our brand of footy and um, see that it stacks up against teams. So, yeah, mate, it was a, it was a good weekend. Yeah, no, it was uh, it was good to watch in bits and pieces, like I said before, but I was, um, yeah, you boys are flying at the moment. Apart from that round one game against the Ds, I feel like you're playing some of the best footy you've played in quite some time. So it's great to see. Yeah. Um, Obviously, actually, I want to talk about one thing. Someone last week saying that I'm asking you all the hard hitting questions on our oh, yeah, podcast yeah. about the Bulldogs because they think that I've got a vendetta against the Bulldogs, but I don't. I I love I love the club. I'm a part of the club. I love the guys that are there. Like you're there, all the boys. Like Nord, I still talk to everyone. So I've got nothing against the club in the Western Bulldogs. I love it. Um, just that we're doing a podcast and I want to ask questions and you ask me questions like that's just how we do it. So to wh- whoever he, he was, I just want to make sure that uh, you know that. <laughs> yeah, I, I I couldn't agree more. I think it's important and like I wholeheartedly know that, um, you know, not just pissing in your pocket here, but I know that you you genuinely care about the footy club. You're obviously a premiership player and a best and fairest winner there and you're going to be a part of the club for the rest of your life. So um, I can – personally say I know that that's how you feel so the 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 what we want to provide for our fans and it's funny that we're talking about it because we've done a lot of episodes now but we want to provide a lot of insight and whether that is you know hard-hitting questions or whatever it may be we're both open to doing that for each other because we want to welcome as many fans that we have into our world and I guess 
a little bit into the inner sanctum of the Western Bulldogs Footy Club and the Brisbane Lions Footy Club. So, mate, ask the hard-hitting questions, mate. I don't give a shit. And for the ones that love our potty, we know that they love it as well. So um, keep doing you, mate. Don't even worry about that. But we, we need to touch on your game against Collingwood. Um, we, we obviously spoke about the week that you guys are currently having. Um, yep. The game itself, I mean, it was kind of a tale of what well, seemed like like two different halves almost. Not two different halves. It was like in that second quarter, you guys played unbelievably well. Your pressure was through the roof. You were turning the ball over in good spots and really hurt and calling with the other way. But it just felt like you just couldn't land like that blow where you kind of got a kind of got a, um, a bigger margin than what it may have been. Did you feel that first and foremost that when you're on top that, you know, we're playing how we want to play? And then second to my question, how disappointed were you in the fact that you weren't able to withstand that and ultimately Collingwood were obviously too good and won the game in the end? Yeah, you, you can definitely feel the momentum shift. And I feel like going back to the first quarter even, you know, we made blatant errors that resulted in Collingwood goals, like a turnover on the wing directly to the opposition. They go down there, they're – end and score like it's just mm, and that mm. sort of that hurts you because it goes from potentially being an inside 50 to you or a score for you to a goal for them so it's like a 12 point play almost yeah like you don't know if we're going to score but they score so it's at least a six point play like seven point play um and we had a few of those on the night which was which were hard because you're running patterns you know what it's like like you're running a pattern to potentially set up for an offensive threat and then all of a sudden it's gone and you've got to run back the other way. You're caught out of position and you can't defend. So trying to think of um, moments like that that really hurt us. There was probably a, there was quite a few on the night. Um, but that second quarter, like you said, was awesome. I think we had 21 inside 50s to two and I can't remember how many goals we kicked, but we didn't kick enough. So uh, you feel, you feel that, that we built a lot of pressure, but you could tell that we weren't scoring because I feel like we put so much into that quarter and we only were up by a few points at half time, And it was like, oh, you know, it was a bit of a downer. But mm-hmm. we went in at half time and um, reassessed everything and thought we were up, we'll go on pretty well. So we just wanted to continue to do that. And sure enough, it was a bit of an arm wrestle for the rest of the game, but they kicked away. And I feel, you know, despite all the play that we had, they probably still deserve the win because we just, yep. you know, those blatant turnovers, you can't, you can't have them in AFL football. And we just had mm. too many of them on the night and probably dropped a few too many marks as well inside 50. I dropped one that Joey kicked to me. And, um, yeah, just little things like that, like they cost you. So at the end of the day, um, disappointing results again. But I did feel like our pressure and our, you know, hunt and all that kind of stuff was back to some of its best. And we just got to clean up those little areas that we made dur- during the game because if we can clean those up, like I said, Potentially, it's a score to us and not a score to them. So everything changes. Yeah, well said. I um I couldn't agree more with what you're saying. It was that's what it looked like from a um you know fan spectacle. Um, how do you you know how do you feel like? I guess you can get the season rolling. I know saying having a win is probably the most obvious answer, but like, what does that look like for you guys? You guys play North Melbourne this week. Yeah, play in North Melbourne, yep. right? Like, yep. what does that? look like you mean what are you hoping that you boys can go out there and and how you're going to play and and get the season rolling for you because you know it's as you said to break the cycle that you guys are in a win is is what you need hey how do you feel like you're going to do that yeah it was interesting i was talking to like pendles came up to me after the game and just talked about how they'd been going you know they were mm-hmm. oh and three as well leading into our game and he's just like just just keep getting to work mate because you know everything will turn eventually it's just at the moment, it's not working for you, but it will. And your best yeah. footy is capable. And I feel like that's the approach we're taking. Like it's, you just go to, you go in there, you work your ass off during the day, make sure you're trying to improve as an individual. So you get yourself right. And then as soon as it comes to game day, you've got your role, you play your role for the team. And then hopefully that can, you know, that can help us win. I feel like that's what we need to do. That's what we need to focus on. Personally, at the moment, I'm probably, and I had a good conversation with a few of the coaches yesterday just around, you know, I'm probably thinking of more too much about everyone else rather than just getting my own stuff right. Like I was going to ground too much on the weekend. Uh, there were times where, you know, I probably could have held onto the ball for longer. Like there's little things like that in everyone's game where we can get mm-hmm. better. So 
mm-hmm. making sure that your stuff, your role is right first before worrying about everyone else is really important for us because if we get the game on our terms, I feel like, and everyone's participating in, in, our, in, our, in our team, then we'll be good. Yeah, it's good. It's a good answer. I um, I I can't wait to see what you guys would produce because obviously your footy is when you play your brand of footy, it's as good as anyone in the competition, and it's exciting. It's extremely exciting to watch, and when you get your players up and running, which we seen a bit of that on the weekend, um, in that second quarter in particular, and in the third quarter as well. So I'm excited to see how you go this week against uh, against North. Um, outside of your games, what uh, what caught your eye? Anything caught your eye? This yeah, this there's round a of few footy? things, mate. I always see a few things that catch my eye. Um, yeah, I don't know if we're allowed to talk about it, but what are what are the the drug saga stuff? Have you seen much of that oh, down you there? You tell me. No, you tell me, mate. <laughs> What's your thoughts on that? Nah, it's just I don't know. It's a bit harsh. I feel like coming out right now and um, being such a, a loud thing in the media. But I've had a few people. I'll be honest. I've had a few people message me that are pretty disappointed in hearing what they've heard, and mm. I must say, like. It's 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 been going on. I feel like that stuff's happened for a long period of time. Like it's and we're, we're everyone's educated these days to make sure that you know, as a as a person as a player that you're looked after. And if you're struggling, then you're struggling, and the club will look after you. The boys will look after you. Everyone everyone wants to support you through that process. So that's the most important thing from our point from my point of view is to make sure that the player welfare is looked after before anything else. So um, yeah. I just wanted to say that because I feel like there's a there's a lot of bad stuff going around about whatever and whoever and um, mm. at the end of the day we got to look after the person, mate. I, there's actually nothing for me to add because you took words right out of my mouth. I couldn't agree more. I think the welfare of the individual is the priority in in um, a lot of these circumstances. So I could not agree more with you, mate. Um, you always come up with something. There's always something that catches your eye. My something that I'm intrigued to know what you think about because. As I said, I reckon you have better opinions than I do. Um, did you watch the game yesterday, the Hawthorne Geelong game? <laughs> yeah, is are you going to ask me about Jack Inovan's high free kicks? Obviously, that's he he can't, got drafted, and and that's kind of how he played, and he's crafty enough to do it. it there's an art to doing it, um, mm. and I definitely feel like um, there were free kicks there that should have been played. Look, there's a lot of them that that was. You know, play on, but there's some there that needed to be paid as a free kick. What is your thoughts? No, I, I think he's harshly judged. I do. I actually think that at times he's taken high, and it wasn't just last week. It was there, there's been plenty of times that he's been taken high, and no one's said anything about it. But I feel as a whole game right now, like the tackler is isn't rewarded as well as what they should be or what they used to be. You can talk about high free kicks, but I'm, I'm more talking about holding the ball or incorrect disposal. Like, that's gone. All you got to do now is literally just attempt to get the ball out. And if you drop it without having any prior, that's fine. That's play on. Yeah, because it's deemed as like the, it being like stripped out of the tackle rather than a legal disposal, or whatever it is. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I mean, I remember there was a point in time, might have been last year or the year before, when it was like the other way. It was almost like as soon as you got tackled, I was holding the ball like yeah, like it wasn't any other way. Now it's now it's I used to get heaps of free kicks, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I know you do. It is, yeah. It is. The the reality is, it's always going to be a talking point, like because you know, it, in my opinion, it's one of the hardest jobs in the world trying to officiate an AFL game. I mean, there's 100%. you've got you've got eighteen blokes on these thirty six players out there screaming at the umpires. You've got fans screaming at the umpires. You can't imagine the amount of stress that they're under. So. Um, I agree. You just the only thing you ask for as a player is consistency. That's the thing that you ask for. You just want consistency and knowing what um well having an idea of what the rules are and then being able to abide to those as, as close as possible. He's almost had a sneeze there. That would have been the first time on a podcast, but it didn't. Um but yeah, I I couldn't agree more with you. I feel like it's yeah, it's it's funny because then is it counted as like a handball? So you just get rid of it, kind of. I don't know. Mate. Are they just counted as a handball or that's another – actually, I want to bring this up again because uh, I know there was a talk about the kick-out rule being a disposal and not a disposal. Oh, yeah. What is your thoughts on that? Can you tell me what your thoughts are on that? No, nah, there's got to be some kind of – I don't know. There's got to be some kind of rule where if the player runs more than 10 metres outside the square and then kicks it, all right, 
no worries. But if he's, if you're taking a step or two outside the square, it shouldn't be a disposal, I think. That's my opinion because, yeah, I saw someone talking about um, Nick Martin the other day because he had, he had a record, I think it might have been mm. eight, Kane Corns or something Essendon's popped record. up. Yeah, yep. equaled Essendon's record, but however many, he had 10 or I don't know how many kick-ins. Um, don't quote me on that, but he had a few kick-ins that are like would make him have like 38 or something, so it wouldn't be a record. So, mm. yeah, he was a bit filthy with that um, Kane Corns. I know he would be, but no, I, I genuinely think it should be. only The only reason why I think it should be considered not a disposal maybe its own stat in a way but not a disposal is because the amount stats are referenced in our game. Like if stats weren't referenced in such a big talking point, I mean, you know, players are judged by their disposals and marks and kicks and handballs when, you know, back in the day when you didn't even know the stats until two days later in the newspaper. Like like that's the way, in my opinion, and it should have been. But obviously clearly with the the involvement of technology and blah, 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 but I'm losing track here a bit. But I, I genuinely believe it should be something – like outside of that, it shouldn't be counted as a disposal. It should just be like maybe just a kick in stat. But it's, do you know what I mean? Like it's not a disposal. It might just mm. be kick in or whatever. Because back, back um, when you had to little chip it to yourself, like it, it wasn't a disposal, which was, you know, which is, I feel like the way it should be. So anyway, it's created a bit of a talking point um, here in Melbourne a little bit because, yeah, there's obviously stats are referenced quite a bit. Um, I want to ask you about the. F- Four undefeated teams. So there's Frio, Melbourne, Geelong, and the Giants. Um, are you surprised at all by any of those four teams? I know it's only a small sample. It's only three games for, I think, is it three games for all of them? Yeah, Giants had a bye. But nonetheless, they've all been extremely impressive, all four of them. No, nah, I don't think there's any that have actually surprised me. You can definitely tell that Geelong's best footy's back. I feel like, you know, yep. last year, not making the finals and, um, you know, uh, yeah, you can talk the same about Melbourne, really. Like, their best footy's back mm. too. So, mm. and the Giants were, we knew they were going to be impressive and they've been awesome. And uh, the Dockers are probably the only surprise. I probably feel like a lot of guys, a lot of people out there would have, um, you know, written them off. But they've come into the, the new season and just, uh, well, they beat us in round one. They were pretty impressive that day. And um, they were down against, I think they came over and played against uh, North. Do they play North? North were beating them. Yeah, yep, yep. North were beating them by six goals or something, and they came back and won comfortably. So they're they're playing some good footy too. So yeah, no surprises from my point of view. I played against Freo in round one, and they were they were really really good. So um, they're going to be a team that's going to be tough to beat all year. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think the Giants for me are the ones that I probably get the most enjoyment watching. Their brand of footy is so exciting to watch, and I love when they. They call it the Orange Tsunami and they get get it running and going and they get it to their forwards one on one. It's an unbelievable brand to watch. I mean, it won't be fun when we're playing against them. Hopefully our brand sticks up and we beat them. But um love watching them play. Um and, and I agree with you with Freo. I have watched their game, their last two games actually, because my game on the Sunday obviously got not much to do on the Saturday, so I watched a bit of the footy and they've been as oppressive as anyone. I mean, Luke Jackson is mate, he is I, I seen this um he might have been Paul Hazelby saying He's like Adam Goods in a way when Adam Goods, I mean, that is, you know, he's got a lot of work to do to be Adam Goods. Adam Goods is one of the all-time mm. greatest players of all time. Um, but you can see the similarities. Like his ability in the air, his ability on the ground, his running um, capabilities, his skills, like he's really, really good. I mean, he's just a joy to watch. I mean, we kind of seen it up close in that granny when he played for Melbourne when they beat us because he had a ripping game yeah. that day and you kind of seen the raw talent. But, mate, it's coming – out in spades at the moment. Yeah, you can definitely tell why Freo wanted him to go over there. What's going to be interesting for me with them is what they do when Sean Darcy comes back. True. Mm, yeah, it is. It is. It's a selection dilemma that you don't want to sit in. Um, I want to touch on one of my teammates, Harvey Gallagher. I um, yep. I I gave him a pump up a few weeks ago when preseason. I said Harvey Gallagher, and I think Buku was the other one, and obviously my boy Sando. Um. Yeah, mate, he is – I sound like a proud um, brother here. Like, I'm so proud of him and how far he's come. I mean, he was – I don't remember what pick he was drafted, but when he got into the footy club, you could just see the raw talent that he had and um, the athletic capabilities that he has were just 
you know, out of this world. And um, he battled with injuries all year last year. I mean, he was barely out on the park because he just have some injuries here and there. And the fact that he put a whole preseason together and worked closely with Tommy Liberatore and um, with the midfield group and, you know, to be able to come to the side and have an impact from the very get-go, it's, it's a credit to him. And um, we're all so proud of him and how far he's come already and we love playing with him. So for the ones that don't know, he, he was nominated for the Rising Star nomination um, today. So... Yeah, hopefully he can uh, come close towards the point in the, the season and hopefully my other boy, Sando, can be in there and a couple others. But yeah, extremely um, proud of Gags and it's awesome. Did, did you get a Rising Star nomination? Yeah, I did. I did. I was nowhere near winning it though. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you remember the round? Do you remember like the oh. feeling? It was a pretty cool feeling, eh? Yeah, I reckon it was, oh, it was maybe like round 10. I'm going to say. Do you remember the feeling? Like, it's a pretty cool feeling because, you know, it's not what you go out there to try and achieve, but to be nominated, you know, as a young gun of the of the competition, it's pretty cool, eh? Oh, yeah. I was pumped. I was, like, over the moon. I mean, it was against it was against North Melbourne, I remember, because I actually didn't play that well. And I thought, you know, I'd played well maybe the week or two before, but it's a bit like that. Like, if you play consistent footy, they'll just give it to you on a week where no one really stands mm. out. So that's mm. what I got. It was... It was round, oh no, it was round 20. Round 20 against North Melbourne in 2016 against, yeah, we won 61 to 47. I'll tell you my stats on the day. <laughs> um, oh, well, since we're look. looking at no rising stars, let's have a look at, I remember my one. What was your one? <laughs> so here we go. I've had 19 disposals. I've kicked zero goals, one, uh, four marks, four tackles, 22 pressure acts. Yeah, I remember yeah. mine was, mine was, uh, GWS versus Collingwood. So I was obviously playing for GWS 2012 and we lost by a whopping, <laughs> I think it was about uh, 120. It was 54 to 174. Dane Swan had Dane Swan had 37 and kicked five. Travis Cloak kicked six. Pendles had 33 and kicked the goal. So, yeah, it was a ripping game. We lost for 120 out of no rising star nomination. What did you get? What were your, like, your stats? Yeah, you know, I had thirty-seven and nine marks, and <laughs> that, that was it. <laughs> what else? Uh, one, one, hey, one tackle, one tackle in a hundred and twenty-point loss. Jeez, Louise, mate, we are we are clueless. Um, my favourite, oh no, my favourite segment of the week is obviously the Brooks Bloom of the week, but the one that I've added in, giving some love to a player. Have you had a think about it? Nah, you go first. You haven't. All right, All right, I've got. I don't want to be biased because, um, you know, I don't want to always say players from my team. So I'm going to quickly just say Leith Vandermeer. I feel like he deserves some external love. He's been, you know, incredible for us up forward. Um, he does not get that much that much recognition um, because he plays a very selfless and unrewarding role. So internally, we value him extremely highly, and what he's been doing for us has been incredible. So I'm going to say Leithy, but. Away from our footy club, uh, my player for the round is Michael Frederick at Fremantle. Um, and as I said before, I've watched Frio's last couple of games because I've obviously had nothing else to do watching their games. And the amount of defensive stuff that he does is incredible. His work rate um, up and down the ground, he plays probably the hardest role in you know, AFL in my opinion, which is that high half forward that gets up and down the ground. And his work rate, you know, I remember on the weekend – you could just always see him in and around the ball and, you know, stopping passages of plays, whatever it may be. And then at the end of the game, you see, um, you know, I think he took a mark and had a shot on goal late in the game and he only had like 10 disposals. And it was like, mate, he's just everywhere. It doesn't feel like he's had 10 disposals. Just as, That's just how, you know, how much you see him on the field. So he's my guy. I feel like he's um, an extremely underrated player and someone that Freo would value very, very highly. Yep, like it. I'll just... Uh flick through a few and I remember watching the um the D's port game on Saturday night I think it was oh um, I know who you're gonna say who is it Alex Neil Bullen no I was gonna oh. I was thought about him but I feel like he's been talked about this week no I'm gonna say a young yeah. player and it's Caleb yeah. Windsor oh yeah yes he yes. he has all the makings that just he's just gonna be a star of the comp one day I reckon like he's his running ability, his first AFL goal that he kicked was unbelievable. Like he's just gone, weaved inside out and then finished the goal. 
I feel like he's going to be a really important player for Melbourne in the future and one that they're going to want to keep because um, so far what we've seen has been pretty impressive. Yeah, mate, I could not agree more. We've played him um, round one and, mate, he was as impressive as anyone. He's You're right, he's got the tools. Like he's got the tricks. Like he moves really quick. He takes the tackler on and he gets through tackles. He's not... He's not the biggest kid out there, but, mate, he can move, you know, real quick. So I couldn't agree more. I love it. I freaking love it. And I love when our um, our fans send in theirs as well. It's um, I read a couple, had some directly sent to me. So it was um, it was nice. Send them through. Keep sending them. Um, we did a uh, – well, we sent out a little um, Instagram story before for some fan questions, uh, which I reckon we can dive into before we get into our segment of the week, which is the Brooks Bloom of the Week. And thanks to everyone who sent in uh, their questions. Had some ripping questions. Um, yeah, it's fair to say I had some ripping ones. Some questions that I won't be asking as well. Some uh, very, very <laughs> silly questions. Go on, ask me um, one. Just, just throw one out there. I won't answer it. No, uh, I ain't asking the one that I got asked. No freaking way. Um, I want to <laughs> ask you, so this is from Lucy, Lucy Dando underscore. Um, thoughts on the gather round and the Adelaide crowds. We haven't talked about Gather Round, but that's this week coming up, and I love it. Last year, I had a great time. I feel like, you know, the when you go down there, there's obviously every team's there, but we get to go out in the community. You know, we went the days before. I know you went the day after, but just being able to, you know, get around Adelaide and the city, and I've spent a bit of time there because Tipper was living there for a couple of years, but um, it's just nice to be able to do that and you know the, there's this vibe about the city you know all the restaurants all the cafes they're pumping everyone's everyone's happy everyone's up and about so um i love it i reckon it's a great idea um look forward to getting down there we leave tomorrow actually wednesday so friday game and um can't wait but what do you think no i agree i love it and it was nice last year because we were able to see each other and we stayed at the same hotel and it was like the old days when we played um Played on the same side, and I had my dessert, which was my peanut butter baguette. Uh, and you had your ice cream and whatever you had. But no, I I think it's great. <laughs> I I genuinely do. I feel like um, it's such a buzz for the for the state of Adelaide, um, well of South Australia. Sorry, Adelaide's not the state. For the city of Adelaide, um, yeah, it's exciting because everyone talks about you know Melbourne being the mecca of the wall, the sporting mecca of Australia, but mate, as footy in particular, but South Australia can, you know, can argue that as well because they love their footy in South Australia and you see it. So yeah, I, I love it. I like it. I like it. All right. I've got one from Carla Pritchard. Why did Ad start a fight with Gib- Gimby? Jimby. Usually he's the one <laughs> to split it up. Loved it. No, nah, it was because um, it was just a late hit on Nader. That's why. Just... That's all it was. It was just a late hit on Nader. Nader kicked it and it was a late hit. It was a free kick down the field. And you know what it's like, mate. You just got to remonstrate, act like a big tough guy when I'm not a big tough guy at all. I'm a uh, <laughs> big softy. And, you know, he could actually ragdoll me if he wanted to. But, um, you know, it's all fun. It's all uh, it's all fun out there. <laughs> what, Why? What do you really want to say? <laughs> oh, we're being honest, aren't we? I want to know what, what you said to him. What would you say? Oh, I would have just said, "Why you do like? Why'd you hit him for?" That was it. Did you call him a weak dog or something? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. And then, as it happens, West Coast players come and defend his players. Bulldogs turn their players. It's just how it happens. So, um, you didn't throw nah, any it's lip. All, uh, nah, mate, I'm good. I keep my, uh, I keep my words to me, and I try and let my actions speak louder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah, so maybe, uh, yeah, so nothing was said. Um, this is from Will underscore Warren underscore eight. Uh, I haven't actually asked you this yet, and it's getting close to the um, to the finals. Uh, the NBA champs prediction. Give me a champs prediction and your MVP. Oh, it's hard to go past Boston. I feel like if Boston go well, if they play well, they, no one's going to beat them. I just reckon mm-hmm. they're going to be too good. Like they And MVP... Jokic. So I agree with you with the champs. I think Boston will win. I reckon they'll play. I'm going to go out of limb and say Oklahoma. Um, Oklahoma is my oh. team for what it's worth. Yep. So they are my team. So there's a bit of bias to there, but I feel like, you know, they're, I know they're very inexperienced, but they've just played some great basketball. Uh, and my MVP is a guy that I've been on for years. And when they did the trade, I said he's still going to be one of the best players in the league. And it's SGA, Shea Gilgis Alexander. 
And mate, he is he is a baller. He is, in my opinion, the best player in the league at the moment. Um, I'm not, not sure if you've seen his game winner. Uh, I think it was only yesterday or the day before. But yeah, he's my um, prediction for the MVP. I mean, I feel like I this this happened this happened to LeBron and it and it happened to MJ when he played. It's voter fatigue. So the voters for the MVP, they're sick of seeing the same bloke win. And I reckon that's what's going to happen with Jokic. So I reckon that's why they're going to vote for SGA. Obviously, Joel Embiid has missed a lot of games, so he won't be around there. And there might be, you know, don't know who else might be there, but I'm going to say SGA. Luca. Yeah. Nah, I can't stand. Oh, mate. Can't stand watching him play basketball, Luka Doncic. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. He's six foot ten, and he's built like... Like nothing you've seen before, but I've never seen anyone flail around for fouls more than this guy does. All right, I like it. Um, let's move on. Did you? Who was your question from? Actually, Will underscore Warren underscore eight. Oh, he sent me a few questions here. I was just like final four predictions. It's not a bad um, question to have right now. Like, who's your who's your top four teams in the comp after the first few rounds? Giants. Uh Oh, I know Sydney lost, but the, from what I've seen, they've been really impressive. So the two, the two Sydney teams, Melbourne obviously can't go past Melbourne because they've, you know, played some great footy. They're my first three, and obviously without saying us, am I, am I allowed to say the Bulldogs? No, no, no. Okay. Um, oh. Uh, it, it'll be between Freo and, and Geelong. I'm going to say, oh, I'm going to say Freo. I'm going to say Freo because uh, I love what their midfield's doing. Luke Jackson with touched on. I, I love the fact that Nath, uh, Nate Fife, no one calls him Nathan Fife, eh? Nate Fife is um, fit, like he looks fit, and he can play a significant role for them going forward. So, um, they're a close top four, uh, just ahead of Geelong. But my number one at the moment is the Giants. Watching the Giants play, like their their good is 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 scary good. So they would be my number one team in the comp at the moment. What's yours? Mine's exactly the same, except I'd swap Geelong and Frio probably. And I actually reckon, yeah, yeah, no, nah, that's it, that's it. I reckon mm. you boys are close. I reckon you'd be like you could be in there instead of. Sydney at the moment, like you're playing some pretty good football, so um, that'd be mine. Uh, this is from underscore Claudia Doyle. How long has Josh and Tipper been together for? Sorry, how long has Josh and Tipsy been together for? Uh, we've been together for what's it been? Well, she spent two years in Adelaide, and it was a year about three years, I reckon. I don't, we don't have a date or anything like a you know how you have like a anniversary or whatever we actually don't i can't remember the time when when i was like oh do you want to be my girlfriend <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work like that mate i'm sure how long have you and kim been together 2017 uh yeah 2017 may 2017 so whatever that is that's seven years this year i like it um all right here's <laughs> another one good good question Couple more ollie underscore hard week underscore one how do you deal with failure Oh, that is a good question. That is a that's a deep question. How do I deal with failure? Um, I think I always come back to what motivates me, and you know what what makes me tick in terms of like what I'm doing. So, footy is obviously my job. So I'm sure it'd be with anything that I did, but footy in particular, and. I always come back to that. I come back to what motivates me. I come back to why I do it, um, the reason why I do it, uh, the joy that I get out of doing it, what I'm doing when we have success and chasing that feeling um, and then being able to you know, chase that success with my other teammates. That's what I come back to. So, for instance, the Melbourne game, round one, you know, we obviously failed big time in that game. So, um, you know, no doubt you have to – you know, confront the failure in a way and assess where you went wrong and how you can get better in whatever it may be. But then, you know, putting things into practice, what, um, you know, in what can help you, you know, have success, I guess. And, you know, for us, that's obviously playing footy. So that's training, that's reviewing, that's sticking together and, and building camaraderie. So for me, yeah, for me, 
Um, I'm, I'm thinking out loud. So it's a good question. It's a really good question. I'm kind of just thinking what I'm saying what I'm thinking. Um, but yeah, for personally, it would be going back to what motivates me. And um, the, the minute I lose that, lose that motivation is the minute I know that I'll, I'll like, there's no point in me playing footy anymore. Because if I lose motivation, then I'm wasting my time. So that would be mine. What about you? I'm sure yeah, you'd probably good. be similar to me. Very, very similar. And I was going to say, like, we're probably both similar in this regard too. I feel like, you know, you do everything to be the player that you are and you just got to trust that that process, like, things will turn. Like, if even if it's going bad for you and you're failing and you're doing things on field that aren't working for you, but you just know that the work that you're doing will eventually end up being on the good side of, you know, you not failing and you performing. So I feel like you've got to trust the process a little bit um, because it's like, well, I'm kind of in that position right now. Like we're we're not winning games. That's kind of failing. And um, But as a group, what we're focusing on is those little things that will help us just continue to get better. We still rely on the routine that each individual has and in preparation and whatnot. But at the end of the day, you just know that things will turn eventually and, we want that ra- sooner rather than later, and you just got to back that process in because if you don't, then the wheels will fall off and and you won't be any good. So we know our best footy is capable of beating anyone in the competition. So that's what we've got to get back to. Agreed. I, I, it's a great question. Um, I reckon we'll ask one more each. I'll ask one more. You ask one more. My one is going to be a lighthearted one. This is from my boy Fraser, Fraser Dix. You know Fraser. Uh, yep. Best meal you can cook. Oh, uh, best meal I can cook. My signature dish is a uh, fish curry. That's my signature. Um, mm-hmm. I reckon I've said it before, but Will Minson taught me how to make it when I was in my first year at the Bulldogs. He got me around for dinner one night and he's like, I'm going to teach you how to make a fish curry from scratch. So no like curry paste or anything. You actually make the curry paste yourself. So mortar and pestle, you do all that. Your kitchen smells beautiful. Um, that's probably my number one thing. What's yours? Uh, oh, mate, I've been dominating the kitchen lately, to be honest. I had Sando and Charlie Clark around uh, on Friday. I brought them around um, on Easter Friday, actually, and and uh, girls were down and I cooked up a feast for them. We made some uh, salmon, just some marinated salmon, but I also did a side uh, garlic uh, butter marinara. It was really nice. It was delicious. I mean, I wish the boys were here talking about it because it was really good. And by the way, actually, I know they'll be listening because they love the potty. I played in both one-on-one basketball and absolutely annihilated them and um, <laughs> and Chuck, Chuck wants to challenge me again tomorrow, so I cannot wait to face him tomorrow, but uh, that would be it. But what I'm, what I'm loving, mate, what I'm loving is my, day be- my night before um, dinner. So obviously I have pasta. You know that. Obviously your whole family knows that. Uh, my pasta machine that I got from um, Harvey uh, – was it Harvey? No, it was Good Guys. It's a pasta machine where it makes fresh pasta in three minutes. And, mate, it oh, is unbelievable. This. I'm telling you, yeah, mate. Yeah, I've seen I'm it. I'm telling you. It is unbelievable. So it makes fresh pasta in three minutes. I slow cook the beef mince. So I'll get home from training at about 12 and I'll slow cook it till six. So six hours worth. And then I'll make the pasta within three minutes and eat it, mate. It is the best thing I can make, definitely. Wow. Well, you're not actually making it. Like the machine's making it. <laughs> well, technically, yes, I know. I'm putting the flour and the water <laughs> and the egg in, mate. And then I'm making and then I'm making the beef mince and and putting all the ingredients in myself. But um that would be my go-to. Nice. Nice. Love it. Well, you still haven't cooked Last for me, question. so I'm waiting for that day. Um <laughs> Last question, mate. Yeah, I've got one. This is just for me though, and I want to just uh, talk about it. Why your eyes are always like? Why your eyes always so red? So I've I've got a pterygium in my eyes, so that's why it's red all the time. So uh, I've actually got it in both now. So I actually have to get surgery at the end of the year to get it cut out because it's uh, really it's like a it's like a sunburnt eyeball, and, it, and then it scars yeah. up. So yeah, it kind of like dehydrates your eye, and then it gets red. So. It gets to a point where it grows and like gets in your eyeball, so I have to get it cut out. So, to uh, WDAFOE01, um, that's, <laughs> that's, that's why my eyes are always so red. Why don't I want to finish on? I actually know what this is, I reckon. What is it? This, yeah, where was the A sign, mate? 
Well, thing is, I didn't know that I had to do it after every goal I kicked. Well, we talked about it. We said at the start of the year, if you kick a goal, you've got to do the A sign just for the first goal. Yeah, well, I promised in my head when I kicked it. you got to see it, though. I was swamped straight away. My hands were, like, wrapped around my teammates, so I couldn't, like, reach around and try and do the A sign. That would have been real hard. But I did think about it, and I thought, am I meant to do the A sign? I'd already celebrated. What did you want me to do? Walk back to the middle of the ground and just start throwing the A up? Yeah, when the screen, when the camera's on you, because you can see at Marvel Stadium when the camera's on you, right behind the goals, just be walking back, just be like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sorry again. I've done it. I did it last year, two years, and I, I've done it again. I'm really sorry. Hopefully, I kick goal this week and I can throw up the A sign. I, I won't let you down this week, and neither will you. And you kick, you kick goal this week. I can feel it in my heart. Yeah, someone actually reached out and said, you guys need to do a – whoever kicks more goals this year has to, like, win a prize on the between you and I. So maybe we should do a little side thing that is a bit of a challenge between us two so we can get goals on the board. Yeah, anything challenging against you, mate, um, sign me up. I love it. Um, Brooks Bloom of the Week. Brooks Bloom of the Week. We have favourite segment. We love Brook. What, uh, what have you got for me? Yeah, and thanks to Brooke and her team for all the support. Uh, my Brooke Bloom of the Week, Brooke's Bloom of the Week, is Tommy Hawkins. We mm-hmm. talked about him last week. It's an easy one, but I thought he played a really important role. He kicked three, I think, yesterday and um, and then got a monster corky. Did you see him get the monster corky in his calf? No, I didn't. Oh, he copped a big-ass knock, and I just felt so sorry for him. So I was like, <laughs> oh, I better give him... Better give him a little pump up and uh, yeah, congratulate him again on on the the, the milestone. But um, yeah, incredible game that he played. But stiff to get that corky at the end. Why don't you remember? Yeah, poor bloke. He he's an absolute superstar and a, and a true gentleman too, which we love. Um, my bloom of the week. I initially was going to do Chris Hemsworth. He came to our game. Saw that. And before the game, I was holding up my our we had a um our old jumper that we wore for when we had the was it the Thor logo? It was like a logo. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I was holding it up to him because he was in the crowd, but he didn't look over, of course. I was a bit flat about that. But um he was going to be my bloom of the week. But you know what? He can be the second. My bloom of the week is my beautiful daughter, Georgie. Reason being is because she got a lot of airtime this week on the Western Bulldogs channel. She was the star of the show at the uh, at the um, Easter egg hunt we had on the Saturday. She it was the first time a lot of people had seen Georgie because obviously she lives in Queensland and um, they couldn't believe how extroverted she was and you know how she'd go up to everyone and hug everyone and just be the star of the show. And last time she was around everyone, I reckon you remember this. It was my two hundredth when she was petrified of the dog. Of freaking Wolfer. Oh, yeah. She was so scared of Wolfer. Yeah. She was crying. She didn't want to run out of me because Wolfer was scaring the shit out of her. So uh, that was obviously, oh, well, that was half a year and a half ago. So now, um, incredible. She, uh, yeah, she's a star of the show. Makes me extremely proud of that little girl. So she's my my Brooks Bloom of the Week. No, I love it. I must admit, I did see the uh, all the posts about her and she's so cute, man. I just, yeah, I don't know how she's cute because she looks like she's nothing like you. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what Lady said to me. Lady said the exact <laughs> same thing. Um, mate, that's it. That's it. But you've got you've got a uh, nice little special announcement for us, don't you? I do have a special announcement, and uh, I had a question on here that asked about um, some of our ads and dunks merchandise. So Brooke and um, and the team and have obviously come on board and, and it's sponsoring us this year. So if you need a backyard done, make sure you hit her up. But uh, they, we, we've done some clothing so we've done some shirts and hats bucket hats and caps that we're going to give away so each week from here on out we're going to put up a question about the podcast so you're going to have to answer the question on our youtube channel on the oz american aces youtube channel so you got to comment on the episode and answer that question as best as you can so each week for example it might be what did ad say this week work for the bulldogs um in their win against west coast you know and the best answer will win so we'll pick it out every week so that's how you're going to win the prize pack. So, yeah, again, each week we're going to do it. Um, we're going to give away a prize pack that's going to have our merchandise in it. It's going to be signed by Adzi and I, which is, we've already done. So there's plenty there to give away, and uh, we look forward to doing it. So, 
again, thanks to Brooke and the team for, for looking after us and helping us out. But we look forward to giving back a little bit to the community. Love it, mate. I'm so excited. We're going to have some ripping answers. We know a lot of people love prizes. We all love prizes. So um, looking forward to it. Um, so I was going to end there. But, mate, again, we, we actually sometimes forget we both play AFL. We didn't even preview our games this week. We didn't. Do you want to do it? <laughs> <laughs> we may as well give a couple, couple minutes feel. Sometimes I forget play AFL. Um, no, nah, you can start, mate. You, uh, you've obviously got North Melbourne this week. Yeah, well, we're we're one of the first games. I think there's maybe one before us. But like I said before, we're uh, itching to get down there and um, put our best foot forward against North. We know that their best footy this year has been really good and they're, they're starting to take teams on. I feel like they're really being brave with their ball movement and um, we have to be on defensively to stop it because uh, they'll pick us apart otherwise and led by, you know, all their – they've. I feel like they've got a lot of good ball users down in their back line at the moment, which will be – Mm-hmm. testing for a lot of teams because if you don't defend them, they'll just get off the chain and, and cut you, cut through you. So um, that's going to be important for us. And as always, the contestable elements, the game, the midfield battle and uh, everything else across the ground, you know, hopefully we can get going this week and look forward to that challenge and getting down to Adelaide for gather round and, and kicking it off. Can't wait to watch. Just quickly, sorry, where you guys are playing out at where? Norwood Oval. Norwood, yep. Yeah. Norwood, I think it's... Yes. Uh, Four o'clock game from memory. Well, exciting, mate. I can't wait. I'll be uh, I wish you all the very best, yep. mate. Hopefully it's uh it's a good weekend for you. Thanks, mate. And you got the you got the cats on Saturday night. That's gonna be a good game. Really good game. Yes. Yes, yes. We've got the Saturday night slot. Um first night game for us. We've had three Sunday one o'clock games, so it's nice to um have a nap in the Arvo. Uh yeah, we've got Geelong, obviously one of the um my my opinion, top four teams. Well, sorry, no, it wasn't. They were top five for me, top four for you. Um. Yeah, they're you know they're playing. Uh, you said before um, that they was playing a brand that is really back to their best, and it looks like that. I mean, they've got some class across the whole field. Um, you know, I've been really impressed by a lot of their young midfielders, like Tanner Bruin, um, had an outstanding game on on Monday and has been playing really well. Um, their usual suspects through there, Tom Atkins came back in, has been unreal. Tom Stewart, you know had an incredible 150 games and five top, five all Australians in that 150 games and he's playing like that again um so yeah we they've had our measure the last few times as well which has been disappointing um I know we beat them last year in the last game but prior to that um you know that had our measure for a lot of the time and um that's you know that's something that you always remember and um you want to beat the sides that have that are always generally on top of you and um, you know, we're so looking forward to this contest. We know that, um, you know, we have to play our best. We have to play how we've been playing and, and hopefully that is, um, you know, is is our brand and not hopefully, I know it is our brand, but, um, you know, being able to now do it against a team that we know is going to be contending at the end of the year is probably the most exciting thing. And again, we haven't won in Adelaide since I think 221 when we beat Port in the prelim there. So, We've played a few times since there and we just haven't been able to finish the game. So really, really looking forward to the game. Can't wait to, you know, come up against one of the best teams in the comp. Um, you know, keen to play the Saturday night time slot, which is one of my favourite time slots to play. And, yeah, looking forward to seeing uh, how we go, mate. I'm um, full of confidence. Yeah, like it. I'm going to be watching that one pretty closely for sure. Uh, that's it, mate. Is that it? Got anything else? Um, I don't. No, I don't have anything else. It's been another great episode. It has been. And thanks, everyone, for tuning in, as always. Um, Thanks to Brooke and the team. Again, we always love talking about Brooke, but uh, we really appreciate the support and uh, look forward to getting all those prize packs out there to, to our loyal fans. So thanks again, everyone, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Good luck, Atsy. You too, mate. This episode is brought to you by our friends at Brooks Blooms, your all-in-one landscaping solution. Brooks Blooms' three-step landscaping experience offers a seamless journey from design to construction and ongoing care, ensuring your outdoor space thrives year-round. Visit brooksblooms.com today to embark on your landscaping journey where every step is a step towards a vibrant and beautiful outdoor entertaining space.